Hello friends see you again with me Supercar. In this video I will review the 2023 Ford Mustang Mach-E GT. Watch the video until it's finished so you can find out what has been upgraded to the 2023 Ford Mustang Mach-E GT. Continue to support the Supercar channel by liking, commenting, subscribing, and tapping the bell so you get other latest car videos. With its various configurations and suite of equipment packages, the 2023 Ford Mustang Mach-E GT has a lot to offer those who want a crossover but want to get behind the wheel of an EV. Those customers will also be able to decide between the content-rich premium model or the performance-enhanced GT. Indeed, even though the name is not a Mustang, the Mach-E GT is still practically agile and fast. Apart from that, it has an attractive appearance, well-appointed interior with all the latest gizmos and gadgets, and ample range and capabilities. On that subject, Ford says the Mustang Mach-E GT can travel more than 300 miles before needing a charge, and the GT performance model soared to 60 miles per hour in 3.7 seconds on our test track. It performed well enough to win our inaugural EV of the Year Award in 2021. For its third model year, the premium trim sees a slight increase in its estimated range, up to 13,000 to 290 miles, and more standard content, including the automaker's Copilot 360 driver assistance technology for the entire range. The new Mustang Night Pony package is available for select premium and GT Performance Edition models. On the premium, it adds black exterior touches to the bumpers and door cladding and the 19-inch wheels are glossy black. For the GT Performance Edition model, the package includes 20-inch gloss black alloy wheels and black GT badging. Additionally, a panoramic glass roof is now standard on the GT and GT Performance Edition. Maki also gets two new exterior color options carbonized gray metallic and vapor blue metallic. Ford says it's good for a driving range of 306 miles when paired with the remote battery and rear-wheel drive, but we still settled for the all-wheel drive version, which drops its estimated range to 290 miles. Compared to the base model, the Mach-E Premium has more powerful fast-charging capabilities, 19-inch wheels, Bang and Olufsen sound system, panoramic sunroof, and power liftgate. The Mustang is now a four-door. Ford named its all-electric SUV the Mustang Mach-E GT. It may be Ford's first EV SUV, but it's not the automaker's first foray into an efficient SUV. The Mustang Mach-E incorporates a pony car nameplate with available electric powertrain and all-wheel drive. For 2023, Ford is continuing to tweak its sporty SUV, finding more range in one of its trims and adding more standard technology across the line. The 
2023 Mustang Mach-E is available with a standard range 70.0 kWh battery or a 91.0 kWh extended range package. It feeds an electric motor mounted behind or both axles. That latter combination creates all-wheel drive, and on the sporty GT and GT performance models, the motors combine to produce 480 horsepower and up to 634 pound-feet of torque. Ford claims this will send the Mach-E Performance GT from 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 3.5 seconds. The less powerful model has 266 to 346 horsepower and 317 to 428 pound-feet of torque. The Maki rides on wheels ranging in size from 18 to 20 inches and can be had with adaptive dampers for adjustable ride tightness. The previous version we're driving in 2021 was a long-range all-wheel drive model that was quicker and better to drive than most regular crossovers. Drivers shouldn't expect the Mach-E to be anywhere near as attractive as a traditional Mustang. However, it's the Mach-E's quiet operation and surprisingly smooth ride that impresses the most. Highlights include a suspension that excels at cushioning large bumps in the road, a cab that is well insulated against wind and ambient noise, and an excellent, easy-to-use climate control system. The supplied seat and steering wheel heaters get hot quickly, although we welcome the option of seat ventilation for warmer climates. The seats are reasonably comfortable, with cushioning that feels as soft and comfortable as memory foam but breathes better. But the seat lacks a few key adjustments, such as thigh pad extenders for long-legged drivers. There's a bit of lateral support holding you in place. Unfortunately, seats with more adjustments were not available. Ford's latest SYNC 4 infotainment system, specifically designed for the Mach-E S 15.5-inch center touchscreen, is one of our new favorites. Menus are easy to navigate, and there's a handy shortcut bar that keeps updating based on the last function you used. And unlike the Tesla Model Y, the Mach-E also has a 10.2-inch digital drive cluster that displays relevant info right before the driver's eyes. The front seats don't offer as much adjustment as you might find in a typical luxury sedan, but most drivers should be able to adjust to their preferred seating position. In the back, there's plenty of room for adults. Despite the Mach-E's fastback roofline, visibility is excellent, and getting in and out of the cab requires minimal effort. The Mach-E's push-button door releases are pretty cool and work well, though we do wonder how strong they'll get over time. Maki nailed its interior technology. We like the large 15.5-inch center touchscreen which is supported by physical controls, such as the volume knob. Unlike the Model Y, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone integration is present and it's also wireless, though you can still connect via a USB cable. Ford's onboard navigation system is responsive and cleanly designed, but not quite as minimalistic as some competing systems. 
The premium trim includes an excellent 10-speaker bang and Olufsen sound system that creates a rich sound environment with access to AM slash FM and XM satellite radio. Our testers also included a full suite of advanced driver aids including adaptive cruise control, lane centering, blind spot monitoring, and a 360-degree camera. It was an early production prototype, so some of the tools weren't available, but the ones that did work worked brilliantly. The Maki hatch style trunk helps maximize cargo space. Ford says there's 29 cubic feet of space behind the rear seats. It's not quite as cheap as the Model Y, especially under the floor. There is, however, a very clever flexible cargo cover that attaches to the rear hatch and either swings up or can be removed entirely. Adding to the mach -E s cargo capacity are the separate rear seats that can be folded down. The front trunk is a bit small but has a drain hole, allowing you to use it as an ice-filled cooler that can be drained later. At the front, the two-level console offers lots of storage options for your personal belongings and makes the front cabin look more spacious. The side door pockets are of a decent width but short in height. The wireless charging pad in front of the cup holder looks like it can hold two phones, but it's actually only big enough for one. Have young children? The child safety seat anchor point is located behind the gap in the back of the seat. They don't look like Euro-style Isofix anchors, but provide okay access. <laughs>